four chaps from North Cornwall who have undertaken one of the most challenging expeditions uh, to raise money for charity. Certainly one of the most challenging I've ever heard of. Not only have they climbed the three highest peaks in Great Britain, they rowed their way around the coast to get to each location. Well, they've done it. They're now live in the studio to report back. Congratulations. Let's get some names. So... Uh, Liam. Liam Sharp from where? From Bude. From Bude. We have got Ian. Ian. Ian Parkinson. Get closer to the mic, Ian. Ian Parkinson. Don't be embarrassed. I know you're the oldest one of all of them, <laughs> but don't let that put you off. And, of course, we got... <laughs> Brown Cardu. Brown, Brown Cardu, mm. Brown. Now, I spoke to Brown, you know, mm. uh, a few times. And Andy Cloak. Andy Cloak from Bude, yeah. Now, get, all get closer to the mic. Now, Andy, was it, was it your mum that I spoke no, to? No, it was Ian's. It no, was Ian's mum, because your mum phoned up and she was ever so proud, wasn't she? She was. You said, oh, do you know about my... Talk to me about what you've done then. Just remind our listeners, if, you, if you've just tuned in for the first time, these guys are... I don't know, what sort of ages are you, Ian, roughly? I'm 47. 47, so you're about my age group. And uh, and uh, Liam, I'm 31. So he's the younger one of the two. Brown, you're knocking on a bit. Uh, I'm 33, but look older. Yeah, considerably <laughs> older. And I'm 37. Andy, so they're all sort of 30s and 40s. So Ian, talk to me about what you did first of all. Just remind our listeners. Uh, well, Liam came up with the idea to raise some money for some charities. Um, we thought we'd do something that had never been done before, which was to run the three peaks. But what had never been done before was do the rowing between between the, the peaks. And uh, not only did we do the, the same circuit as the sailing, we actually did it in reverse, which is harder against the tidal stream. Because we thought we were going to row home. I j- <laughs> <laughs> it's all downhill, you know. So, the, 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 you came up with this bizarre challenge, and you wanted to raise money, why? What was the, what was the purpose behind I it? I just wanted to try and give something back, really. Try and, you know, raise some money for charities, you know, for good causes. The RNLI, you know, we all use it, we're an island here. Uh, help for heroes, whether you agree with what's going on or not. You know, these boys need help and women. And uh, the two local air ambulances, the Devon and Cornwall air ambulances, imbued, we use both of them all the time. They're yeah, there would, yeah. Yeah, every right, day, right every day. So we wanted to try and give something back. And uh, one night I went to the pub and had one shandy too many and came up with this bonkers idea and fed the rest of the guys a bit more beer until they agreed to come with me. So these were the, th- the, the they were Scarfell... Yep. Um, uh, did it, did it, did it, did it, ben, ben Nevis. Nevis. Ben Nevis. Ben yeah, Nevis. Who, Scottish who one. can forget Ben <laughs> Nevis? And which was the third one? Snowden. 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 So where did you start then, Brown? Well, we started at uh, a place called Core Park, just outside of Fort William, which is where Ben Nevis is. So the run was slightly longer. So we had a trek to the base of Ben Nevis and then up, and then obviously back down, back to the, the boatyard where, where we had our rowing boat moored up. And so this was a rowing boat, because initially you had problems with the rowing boat. Just tell me about that, Andy. What happened with the rowing boat? Oh, we, we had a few problems. Um, you talking about when we were at the Muller Galloway? Oh, but I think so, yeah. You had a, you, 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 I don't want to harp on the, the negative, but we'll get, get it out of the way, shall we? Uh, you had a rudder problem. We had you? a rudder problem, yeah, where uh, one of the cables, uh, or the, the attachment for the cable had broken. Uh, we are in some particularly rough sea at that point, and uh, because of our training, three of us a lifeboat crew, uh, we knew that we need to make it safe, and rather than wait until we're in a dangerous position, we asked for a tow. And uh, we got some assistance uh, that came from uh, Port Patrick Lifeboat, who were excellent. Um, now that, that must be actually quite a skip. I know that you're all mariners, or three of you are, but that was, nevertheless must have been quite quite nerve wracking that that time. Um, no. it, it could have been, but not particularly because we identified it early to see that uh, um, we needed a tow just to get us into somewhere safe. Uh, we we could have sat out where we were, but um, being that our training had kicked in, we decided that we'd get a tow early. Um, and we called up for assistance uh, in the way of a tow. The pa- um, Port Patrick lifeboat came out to help us, um, but they didn't help us in taking us any further. They took us further back, so uh, uh, we, we still had further to go by the end of it. Right, so that didn't work necessarily to your advantage. So, so Brown, t- talk me through this then. There you were, you'd got towed back in, and in front of you was Ben Nevis. Oh, oh no, 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 we had already done Ben Nevis oh, by this it. point. We had, right. we had done Ben Nevis, D1, we assaulted Ben Nevis at five in the morning. And we how started high is going, Ben Nevis, remind me? It's about 4,400 feet. Something like that. Know. Is it? I don't know. Well, we've, no. we've sort of blanked all the numbers out of our yeah. heads. Cause it was high. You looked it at it yeah. and thought, oh, my... Yeah. So, what's this business about 
running up the mountain. You didn't run up the mountain, surely. Well, we gave it a good go. We, <laughs> 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 we, we ran as much as we could. Basically, our total ascent time was just under five hours, I think, and that was with a fair trek from Fort William to the base of Ben Nevis. Um, so it was just shy of 26 miles round trip Oof. on the run. Um, so, yeah, and then we had to undertake the 280-odd mile rowing. And, right. and and it was halfway through that rowing section where a rudder broke. So we had been a day and a half in. Yeah, when, yeah. A day and a half in when a rudder broke. And, right. yeah. So Ben Nevis was the first peak. You had three peaks. The next challenge, Ian, was which one? So you'd done that. You got towed back in. You then had to to row to the next peak some how many 200 and what miles well it was 200 from from fort william down to whitehaven wow so well, by, the t- by the time we got to whitehaven we'd actually done a uh, 30 a 27 mile stint without stopping um just to try and catch up with some of the time we'd lost when we were pulled back into a place called drummore unfortunately it was a dry harbour so when the tide went out we had to wait for the water to come back yeah, in so we lost stranded. about 12 hours there so your next peak was which one? The next peak was Scaffold Pike, which is a 13-mile cycle. That's Cumbria, isn't it? Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, in the Lake District. district. Yeah. It was a 13-mile cycle from the, 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 the water side to the, to, um, the Gethel Twaite, isn't it? Gethel Twaite. Gethel Twaite. But what they didn't tell me was there was a 6.7-mile run before we even got to the bottom of Scaffold Pike. <laughs> Then we had to go to Scaffold Pike, which they did, they let to tell me before and we started. Scaff- and you're the oldest one. Yes, yes. And I the running you- isn't my strong point either. <laughs> I just got it's phenomenal. <laughs> so here are the guys, they cycled, they ran and they rode up uh, the highest peaks. So so um Scarf Air was how high? Not not as high as not quite as high, but it's like the actual terrain is a lot worse because there's no actual designated path all the way up. So it was actually the worst climb of the three, even though it wasn't the highest. Uh, you got. It took you how long to get to that one? Well, well, the round trip, which was the twenty-six miles plus the uh, eight mile on the track and the up and down Scaffold Pike, was uh, just under eleven hours round trip, non-stop. Phenomenal. So you got back there. You must have taken some respite, uh, Liam. We took a little bit, only enough uh, to let the weather go through that uh, we were expecting. Um, we waited for the weather to go through, and then on the next tide that was possible, out uh, we went again, and on our way down to Carnarvon. So, th- th- so this was the final sort of piece of the jigsaw. You were heading towards... Well, we were heading down towards Wales, but there was another stint to do after Wales to re- get to Barmouth. But right. um, getting down to Wales was fun in itself. In, in what way? What, 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 went, what went wrong? Brown? Well, we, we, we left Whitehaven and pushed on in mid, mid-morning. We were planning to do a long stint. That tent stint turned into 90-odd miles because uh, we had to be diverted through a gas field and a wind offshore wind farm, um, and that was in the middle of the night and the rain, and and that was that was pretty 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 soul destroying at that point because we knew we had to tack on a lot more mileage, and then when we got to the end of this stint, we had to break into the Menai Straits to get into Carnarvon, which is the bit of water between Wales and Anglesey, which if most folk that know is pretty treacherous water, so we had done. Roughly thirty-seven hours, I think, non-stop. By this point, and having one one hour's no, in, rest in awful conditions. Yeah, having one hour's rest every four hours, and when we got to the entrance to the Menai, we thought we'd timed it perfectly. Bang on high tide, and we rode for an hour and a half, making no headway, oh, no. and we just could not get. And we were doing point five of a knot at that point. <clears throat> Dropped her anchor and waited for two hours, and then cruised in the next morning. At what stage, Andy, did you look at? Liam, who came up with this ridiculous thing and say, do you know what, I actually hate you. Did you say that to him at any stage? About day one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was brought in uh, later on, there was someone else that was uh, going to be doing it with the three chaps and uh, I was asked to be the reserve and then there came a point where reserve was, we need you to do it as well. Uh. So uh, uh, I jumped in a bit later um, and only had a few months training with them. Uh, but uh, it was certainly very tough, and it was a lot tougher than I thought. Uh, but I think we got into the, the way of the rowing, and the more days we were doing, the better we got. We've got into Wales, we got into Carmarthen, and uh, we've got a 24, 25 mile run. In the middle of it is a little matter of Snowden. <laughs> I did. Um, <laughs> just uh, 25 so you're going to run a marathon and then when you finish running the, a marathon length pretty yeah, well in the middle you of then it. got snowed no no snowed's in the middle oh, of it oh that is in the middle it of was it. 8 miles to the base no. 4 up 4 down 8 miles back 
It's just phenomenal, isn't it? Uh, Snowden, was that a piece of cake then, compared uh, to the other two? Yes, for me it was. It was but easier. it was still hard, but out of the three of them, that was the easiest one of them all. How how long, Liam, I mean, you came up with this sort of cock and bull idea, yeah. really, you know. Uh, you got back to to Bude and Launson, because uh, which one is from Launson? You're Ian. From, Ian's from Launson, the rest of you from Bude. Which one of you guys, three of you, are you with RNLI? Yeah, myself, uh, Brown and Andy are all on the Bude boat. Right, okay, and uh, Ian, obviously, Launson is sort of a sort of landmark. Well, I work in Bude, I work for Western Power in Bude, so... All right, so, so oh, you, you, you know that area very well. Uh, obviously, you're drinking partners together. How long from the time did you start to the time that you finished? How long are we talking about here? It took us just uh, 13 days, was it five hours, six, six hours? Six and a half hours. Yeah, yeah, 13 days, six and a half hours to complete the whole challenge. And no one's ever done this challenge before? Not as far as we know, no one's rode the entire entirety of it uh, there was obviously the sailing uh, race and some of them do have to row their boats during that but they don't row the whole thing like we have That's ever fantastic. but they have they have rowers on they have runners on the boats they don't do all foot so all. exactly so yeah. as individuals no one has ever done no. this whole thing together uh brown was it all worth it i mean you and i spoke several times and you sounded uh, on the phone at Absolutely exhausted. You were so exhausted sometimes you couldn't even talk and we had to sort of do it the next day. Yeah, there was there was occasions where we had phoned up to, to get a chat and, and things happened and we had to all four be busy on the boat and stuff. Um yeah, it's been a great, great thing to do. Um really pleased um that we've done it. Uh, and the charity money's come in and, and, and that's probably the most satisfying part of the whole exercise that mm. we know we've we've gathered up a fair bit of money for these four charities. And Andy, do we know how much money you, and the four charities the two air ambulances, the Devon and Cornwall air ambulance, the R and L I and uh, Help for Heroes. So t four really powerful, uh, important charities. How much money? Roughly, um, I suppose it's still coming in. It's still it? coming in at the moment. We've still got other things planned to get more money, hopefully. Oh, right. um, but uh, we're on about uh, just over the twenty thousand. We're saying with sponsorship, tremendous. Um, we're hoping to raise that with a charity auction that we've got planned. Um, so we're not sure what date yet, but it'll be yeah. within the next uh, month or two. Well, let us know when the charity auction is. We'll absolutely give it as much publicity as we can. <laughs> uh, the highlight for you then, let's start um, from back to front. Uh, Andy, the one thing that you would take out of this challenge is what? What was the highlight for you, the most rewarding thing you did? Um, I think the fact of doing the three peaks, I've, I've wanted to do that before and being able to uh, run up the three of them and do them all has, has been great, but to take part in a challenge which has never been done before is uh, something that I'll certainly take away from it. Mm. Brown? Um, the fact that people have met us and went, yous are mental. <laughs> um, you can't do that, and we've gone and done it. That's that's the thing for me. The, amount of, the, the odd two or three people that have met us and said, not possible, mm. you won't make it. And we've done it. That's that's the thing that makes me proud. Well, and so proud you should be. Uh, Ian, th there must have been a time at some stage, you know, and I'm not saying this because you're an old geezer, because uh, I am a bit older than you, as you know, I know we look the same age, but... <laughs> you know, <laughs> shut it, all right, boys. <laughs> Bailey's not here. Uh, look, uh, th th there must have been a time when you thought, I can't do it, I cannot, yeah, I scuffle cannot. Park. Scuffle Pike, that seven mile run before we even got to the mountain, which they didn't tell me about, was an absolute killer for me. But and did you think I, I was there? That was the only time? time. The only time when, as I was going up, thinking I'm not, I'm not sure whether I'm going to complete this. But once I got to the top, I knew I'd done two of them. We were over halfway through the rowing. That was it. I knew I was going to finish it then. And I'm guessing that point when you reached the top of Scarfell Point, that peak rather, yeah. that must have been for you just a phenomenal. Sort of uh, Snowden was life. the one because that was the one I actually got up and thought you know I ran that one more than the others and I really nailed that one it was a big satisfaction personal satisfaction for fantastic. me but being told that we were, couldn't do it and we did it was for all of us was fantastic as a group yeah. uh, it's, it's just amazing stuff isn't it and, and Liam all those months ago when you came up with this hairbrain scheme uh, after a few um, I don't know ciders beers whatever you were drinking um yeah, for you. phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. So proud of like the lads that have been there, for James, the sub that came with us the whole way, and for the rest of the land crew. Um, absolutely brilliant from this, you know, silly, eyed drunken idea in a pub to being sat here today doing a radio interview saying that we've done it and we're raising this money and we're going to carry on raising the money. It's just phenomenal. You know, there were some low points, but that's got to be my highlight.